let's get into this episode's major prospect profile. Uh, again, as I said before, we are, we uh, have begun our analysis of every realistically possible Red Wings fourth overall pick. So we've been doing prospect profiles for first, second, third round guys. Um, I mean, all spring and summer. But now we are into the guys who you might see walk up or, I guess, zoom in <laughs> to the stage at fourth overall for Detroit in a month. Uh, we started last episode with Jake Sanderson, and this episode is none other than an even more divisive potential pick, goaltender Yaroslav Askarov. Brad, you take the first blow. So let's look at the optimistic upside here. When was the last time a goalie got drafted in the top five of an NHL draft? If you don't want to look it up, it was 2005, and that goalie was Carey Price. Yep. I don't think there's a single Montreal Canadiens fan out there who would say that didn't work out very well. So and I am who not before that was it, Brad? Before that would have been Mark andre Fleury. Exactly. So a couple of good goalies. Do you want me to keep going? Rick DiPietro. No. Nope. Stop. No. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, so for the most part, it works out all right. So it's also the most important position in the game of hockey. But as Prashanth will beat to death, it's also the position you don't want to overpay because lots of guys can do it adequately. So if we're going to ignore the co future contract circumstances aside, certainty in net is always a good thing. You need it. You can't win without a good goaltender. Even teams that do a by, by platoon in the playoffs, like right now the Islanders, you do it well and you can be successful. So Askarov could solve a lot of problems for the Wings. They don't have a great option in the system right now. Yeah, we still have hope for Philip Larson and Keith Petruzzelli and Jesper Eliasson. We're not giving up on these guys. But if you're at the casino throwing chips on the table, you're probably not throwing a lot of chips down in their favor right now. Askarov solves that. This is, he, No goalie is a sure bet, but he's as close as we've seen since we started this podcast. That's the reality of it. He is elite, elite, elite. Remember how last year going into the draft, we gushed about that US NTDB team that was just trucking everybody loaded with stars. Askarov's the one who stopped them from getting a gold medal at the U18s. He's the one who shut them down. He's the one who won Russia a gold medal. He's already played in the KHL at 17. That's insane. And he didn't play all that poorly. The only reason people are kind of down on him right now is because he had a subpar World Juniors. I mean, he was a 17-year-old goalie at the World Juniors. I, I That's not something I am going to put too much credence into. The guy, plain and simply put, is a potential and almost likely franchise goalie. Yeah, Askarov is so good as a goaltender. He made me sit and teach myself how to properly project goaltenders. I went back and watched junior footage for top-ranked goaltenders that have been drafted in the past. Admittedly hard to, harder to find because it doesn't happen a lot, but that should also lend credence to what Brad said. If it, it's not happening a lot and you look at the situations where it did happen, there's probably good reason for it. There's probably good reason for it now. Um, the guy is a phenomenal goalie. He is very fast. Like he's very quick across his crease. He's a little unconventional at times, but I like how aggressive he is. And I like the fact that his, you know, unconventional, you know, stance sometimes or how he challenges shooters sometimes, um, it works for him. He's incredibly smart. He reads the plays extremely well. He reads shooters very well. He's got good size. He's what, six, three, six, four. Like you need that size in a goalie, so you're not looking at some uh, undersized, uh, freakishly athletic goalie where you have to wonder whether that's going to translate into the NHL. Like he has every tool, good rebound control. Like I don't blame him for having a bad um, World Junior. I think goalies take a long time to develop, and that's a huge mental game, especially at that position. Um, I, I genuinely believe that if this guy doesn't turn into someone's franchise goalie. It would be a mild surprise at the very least. One thing we haven't even mentioned about him too is not that it really is anything that affects him game. He's goofy. He Southpaw. Goofy. Southpaw yeah. catches with his right hand. Don't see a lot of that in the NHL anymore. 
Um, I'm a good dork. But the question here is, all that said, can you truly select a position so uncon- like unpredictable as goaltending or goaltender at fourth overall when you have holes at every point in your roster and when you come to a contract, you are probably going to have to pay him a disproportionate amount based on what is available in terms of goaltending services on the market. So coming at this from a Red Wing specific standpoint, no, absolutely not. The, he's got to be – I'm not going to say I'd put him on my do not draft list at number four, like full stop. There, there's a reality where it makes sense. But if I go up to that stage to make the pick 99.9 out of 100 times, I'm not considering Askarov. The big reason for me isn't even the contract implications down the road, which are a very good reason to not do this. It's because goaltending is the most volatile position to predict. There have been surefire goalies drafted in the first round that absolutely flamed out. The Red Wings, where they are as a franchise, the fact that they still have holes at every position, and this is their highest pick of the rebuild so far, they can't miss here. That I don't care what anybody says, and I don't care how much of a guessing game scouting is. We had this conversation uh, last episode of the episode before. They cannot miss here. They cannot afford to screw this up. It would be bad enough if at fourth overall, they got the seventh best player out of this draft, which all things considered wouldn't be a train wreck, but I would consider that a pretty big failure um, in this draft overall, even if that player turns out to be good. With a goalie, there's a good potential They don't play in the NHL. Like, again, I'm not betting on Askarov to completely flame out, but with a goalie, that is always a possibility that is greater than, what, 20%? So who who out of the skaters that are realistically possible for the Red Wings to pick at four would we hate the most? Probably Sanderson. I'd sit here and bet money. I would put a good amount of money down that Sanderson's going to be a useful NHL. NHLer at least, even if that's as a number four shutdown defenseman who doesn't play any power play, he will play and he will contribute in some way. Okay, that's a miss, but at least they got something out of it. If Askarov doesn't live up to potential, like I said, he may never play a game for the Red Wings. I don't like. I said before, I'd be surprised if he wasn't someone's franchise goalie. And I stand by that based on his projections, but I think I should probably clarify. We're talking now about that position is unpredictable. And I I, I think it is. I think we can say that Askarov is likely to be a good goalie, but you can't take that ultimate gamble when you're already too many years into a rebuild that's way too far behind. If we were talking about way less talent on the board and guys, the guy at fourth overall would be at best as good as like Anton Lundell or like uh Seth Jarvis or something I'd be way more open to taking Yaroslav Askarov picking Yaroslav Askarov right now would be in my mind akin to how I felt emotionally at the time as to when Detroit took Moritz Sider not exactly the same circumstance I think Sider would still have been a bigger reach in terms of like who you're the amount of talent you're selecting at your position, but still it, it was a guy who is unlikely, but you were reaching because you know, you wanted him and you thought he was important for the future. And you really identified that position of need. Here's another thing. You can't win hockey games. You can't win, uh, make the playoffs and you can't win a sailing cup. If your entire team is bad, except for your goalie, you can do those things. If you have a great team and an average goalie. Speaking of goalies, uh, Marc-Andre Fleury gave up the first shot of the game. Good man. Good man. Eat your heart out, Alan Walsh. But yeah, totally agree with bo- both of you guys. Like, I think the pulse of this draft is forwards heavy, light on defense, one potentially franchise goalie. So I, th- I think you need to read the room and, and make you know the smart, the most correct pick, and that would not be Askarov for us. If Askarov ends up being the best player out of this draft and say he goes to Minnesota, or are they drafting like 11th or something? Um, and Detroit picks a guy who is really good, first line winger or something, 80 point player. I'm, I'm realistically not upset. 
because it would just be too much of a gamble. Think of how much opportunity cost would be lost if Detroit took Askarov and he just wasn't there for them. Another thing is, okay, let, let's say another part of this is we talk about how he would fit into the organization. Immediately, he'd be Detroit's top prospect in a very unique situation. If they select Askarov, they are pushing off his entry into the NHL as long as possible because they want to avoid paying him his first uh, non-ELC entry-level contract as long as possible. Not only that, goalies take longer to develop. Not all of them, but if this is a guy who isn't going to come to form until he's, say, 26 27 then they that would probably align way more with how far away they are from contending uh maybe 26 27 is too aggressive but let's say like 25 24 25 so if they draft Askarov, you're not going to see him anytime soon and that would be by design it would be the right choice and they would have no other choice contractually and with his development so that's not any reason to not pick him, but it's also another consideration that would need to be made. But yeah, he would immediately become Detroit's top talent in their pipeline. Mm, yep. No you wouldn't really want to subject a young goaltender to this team. No. I don't want to subject any goaltender to this team. <laughs> yeah, Bernier is our savior. Bernier. He's our sacrifice. He's a martyr right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this this season would have been way harder without Bernier. For the people who want Askarov, I appreciate your bravado. I want to go with you to Atlantic City one day, and I don't want to have a dollar in my pocket because I think that is an, a massive, massive gamble. I understand what you're after, and I understand the appeal. I think the world of him as a prospect, I really do see a great goalie in the future. It's easy to say you can get a great goalie or a good enough goalie different places, and I can't give you specific names, but it's just the reality. It is much, much, much harder to find top six, top three forwards. It's much harder to find a number one or number two defenseman in terms of ac the cost of acquisition and, and when you can bring them into your organization. In terms of likelihood, rough percentage, how likely would you be, would you think that it would... Uh, you, how likely do you think it is that Eisman walks up and takes Yaroslav Askarov? Three to five percent. Oh, I, I don't even know how you really can quantify it. It's less than 10% for me, but I have no real reason why I would think that. I, I think there's so many better forwards than to take Askarov with uh, the fourth overall pick. It's... Uh it's tough you're right it's tough to quantify i'd probably say the same thing like five to ten percent but if there's a twist thrown in here and then the red wings are going off the board it's going to be askarov i can askarov actually has three arms only steve eiserman knew that so that's why yeah him. the other one is uh it sticks straight out from his back so people don't see it because they only look at him head on from the camera if you turn sure. a little bit you can see the fingers flapping around behind him Kind of like a, a, a then that one. would make sense. I would be perfectly okay with us uh, with the Red Wings taking him at fourth overall. And that's the difference a good GM makes. That's all scouting right there, you know. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. No, I, I don't think it's likely, but I have this feeling in, in my stomach where if the Detroit goes off the board, it's not going to be Sanderson. It's not going to be uh, you know Holtz. It's not going to be anything like that. It is going to be Askarov. It's going to be full balls to the wall. Yep. I thought we needed a franchise defenseman last year. We took one. I didn't give a shit what his draft ranking was. Uh, yep, we need a franchise goaltender this year. Yep, I took one. I don't give a shit what his fra uh, what his draft ranking is. I don't. I won't call it likely, but if there is a twist, I, I think it'd be Askarov. That's a. That would be a bold new world. Emotionally, angry, upset, happy shocked but you know you'll go with it where would you land nervous yeah again nervous because I, again i'm a proponent usually of the boom or bust prospect swing for the fences i mean in the sydney crosby draft the next best player to come out of that draft was Carey price so there is a reality here where askarov is a top two player in this draft Again, contract implications down the road, be damned. But if you get a top two player out of this draft, you're happy no matter what the outcome is. But man, you could get 
<laughs> this could be Carey Price or this could be Chet Pickard. Everyone knows goaltenders are voodoo, and that's for, for good reasons and bad. I, you know, it just feels like it. The pick is way too valuable to spend on a, a goaltender when you know you can take swings at later drafts or free agent free agency and potentially get your starter there. Like teams have shown recently. I don't know. I don't know. I I I, I completely like the the words came out of my mouth about how good Askarov could be, but I still I can't, just can't get on board with it. I won't be upset. It's not my job to be doing this again. We're talking heads, but at the same time, even worse than how I'm looking at like Trevor Zegras right now, as opposed to Mo Sider, I will be glaring at all of the forwards Detroit could have taken while Askarov is developing, and it will be painful. Anxious uh, and nervous is a good way to put it. That would put a huge that, – that would be sticking your neck out like nothing else a GM has done coming into an organization. That would be a big boy play. Yeah. That is balls to the wall. I don't care what you think. I'm going to be right, and you're going to like it in the end. <laughs> Steve Eisman. I don't think it's likely, but that's just where I land. Okay. That is a uh, prospect profile on Yaroslav Askarov. Again, we're going to be doing these every episode, so uh, stay tuned for more. Um, Thanks for tuning in to the Winged Wheel Podcast. Be sure to check out wingedwheelpodcast.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll also find links to other ways to support the show, such as Patreon, official podcast apparel, and more. And don't forget to follow the show on Twitter at Winged Wheel Pod. And of course, the hosts at Brad Crisco, at Ryan Hanna, WWP and at Hockey Town Evan.